Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now I've decided to paint this page today. I'm going to mostly paint it with a little bit of pencil over the top if I feel I need it. And it is Anna Calzon's Summer Nights. And I'm using the Paul Reuben paints, watercolour paints. Uh, a variety of aqua brushes. I do like different brands, so I just switch between different ones. Clean water, even though it doesn't look clean and light, I promise you it is. This is just well and truly used, loved and stained <laughs> to this point. Same as this cloth. And forever I said I wasn't going to use this and I thought it's silly. Why shouldn't I be using it? But I'm feeling in the autumn spirit. I know that uh, not all you guys call it autumn. Some of you call it fall, but that's what that's what I'm used to calling it. Actually, I'll keep these here and I'll pre-wet some colours. Now, I, I want some reds, oranges, browns and olive greens for this. Now, I'm just going to concentrate on the actual mushrooms and then leave it to dry. I might do a bit of pencil over the top and then decide what I want to do about the background. Now, usually I'd do it the completely other way around. But this is the way that I fancy doing it today. So I've got a little pipette. Again, nice and stained. That's probably ink tense, I would have thought. Now, I haven't got my palette, uh, swatching palette for this, so I'm just going to have to wing it. So, these colours at the bottom, all these brown shades. I'm hoping that the lighting is a little bit better for you uh, in this video because I've got my umbrella lamp here, and then I've got my normal big lamp here. So, if I turn this one off, it does create a big shadow on this side, so I do have to have both of them on <laughs> unfortunately so it's going to get super warm in here so let's just do some reds as well I'm not 100% sure which red I want to use and then uh, olive greens and then a bit more on the black so leave that to activate a minute they do take a second or so these to get kicking I don't think I need any of the lime greens so that should be enough in it actually I want a couple of bits of oranges and yellows they're a bit too dark I think and we'll try it we'll try it I'll have to swatch it onto the palette that's the way that I'll do it so I'll clean off while we're waiting I'll clean off some of this I haven't caught my spray bottle handy so I'll just have to do it like this not ideal not the end of the world although I have got a cloth I'll have to move Isabel's camera my turn to have the camera tonight so she's there on mute I can see her but I can't hear her but she's fast asleep so let's get some of this tidied up so how is everyone doing I hope that you've had a nice day I'm gonna be smart about this and actually move the beak <laughs> because I know how clumsy, that, how, uh, how clumsy I can be so if I move the beak that might be a better idea but I just fancied colouring this page and I thought why not start it off on camera and hopefully finish it off on camera as well not sure whether this will be a one or two part I don't want this perfect so I just want it so there's not loads of that lime green still roaming around might as well put some of that brown as well get rid of the majority of it it'll do it'll do do you remember that from uh babe the pig that'll do pig that'll do <laughs> so that just reminded me of right that will do that'll be fine so that cloth can go there and i've managed to get it all over my table and funnily enough i did clean this table yesterday so that's fun right, let's get a little bit more organised shall we so like I said I hope that you're doing alright I'm doing very very good thank you for asking um, so we'll start off I think this is a Zig Kuritake brush this one um, I think I'm going to bring the camera angle down ever so slightly for you there we go that should be better so with these first ones I want it to be like a mustard brown colour so hopefully you can still see the palette there and move it over a little bit. I'm thinking of getting a wider desk and then I've got more room instead of just squishing it all on. But we'll see. 
we'll see. So for my mustard colours, let's try and mix a couple of shades because that's too bright. That one's a bit bitty, that colour. I do really, really like this palette because this palette was gifted to me from my sister and my niece. They went uh, joint, jointly and got me a gift for my birthday. So I'll go ahead and do the initial layer of this. I'm not doing, you know, not worrying too much because I plan on going over the top of this. I just want this to be the base layer almost. Oh, I forgot to mention, I did put clips at the side just to keep the the book as flat as possible because when I'm working with watercolour paints they do tend to have a mind of their own so I've just placed the colour down this is where I want the highest uh, the lightest colour sorry to be so if I just pop that on for now I will keep all of that colour because I might end up using it in different areas so we're going to this terracotta shade they are lovely, lovely and pigmented these and I did get these off Amazon so they sent me the money and then I ordered them off Amazon surprise surprise so it's sort of the wet on wet technique I really don't want this paint the mustard colour to dry because I want this to bleed into each other A little bit more. See, it's working perfectly there. That's how I want it. Maybe I can just do a really subtle background and create a shadow or something. I do think I want you in a little bit closer. I just wanted the uh, paints on the camera as well, but you can't have everything. <laughs> you can't have everything, I suppose. let that colour bleed up, bleed down, you know, let it do what it wants to do. Clean my brush off again. And then let's go into this chocolatey shade. I nearly went straight onto the picture that I'm so used to doing that. Well, that's not dark enough, so let's go a little bit darker. There we go. Oopsie daisy, whoopsie daisy. I'm going all over the, all out of the lines, everything. So I'm going to have to do something for the background there now. It's not the end of the world. If I stopped painting or colouring a picture every time I did, I did something like that, I wouldn't get any pages finished. So I'll just carry on like it never happened. I don't want too much of this, I just want to add a little bit of depth and I might, might even add a little bit of gel pen, possibly. We'll see what it looks like dried because don't forget watercolour does dry lighter than what you see here. So it will look different. But I'm assuming by the time that we finish this one, this one will be completely dry. So oh, I think that I want this one, I want this portion, I I'm, I know nothing about mushrooms, I know that they just taste nice, <laughs> um, my whole family would disagree, but this part of the mushroom I want it to be like a creamy mustard colour again, but not as yellow as that, and then a red I think at the top, so if I add some of this cream shade maybe, it would help if I cleaned my brush off, I'm here trying to show you how to do it and I'm doing it wrong myself. So add some of this cream shade maybe, some of the yellow, in with the mustard. Does that create? That's not too bad. Maybe some of this shade, that's more like it. So I just want to do, is it the stalk? Is it the stalk on a mushroom? I don't know. I want to do the whole of this actually. We'll work on the I'm going to call it a stalk, it's probably not called that. 
but we'll work on a stark portion first and then work our way up. I just think painting and illustration, especially in Hannah's books, sometimes it just makes a nice change instead of just using coloured pencil. I've not got the patience to sit there. I wish I had. I really wish I had. But I haven't the patience to sit there just with coloured pencil on an illustration. I envy those that can. So I'll leave the door empty for the moment because I'm not sure what I want to do with that. And with this mustard shade, I'm going to add some of this. See if we can get it a little bit darker. Just add some shadows underneath. I'm gonna leave that there for now. I know that there's really, really dark lines, but I'm gonna leave that there for now, and then clean my brush in a minute and come back to that. off. I just want to blend some of these lines and I will go over with another layer of that because I do want it to be a little bit darker but I'm excited for the reds, I'm excited for the reds so let's give it a go. Um, this might be a bit too red, 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 red. Let's try a bit of this mixed in. Well, that's not too bad. Just water it down a little bit. And go over the whole thing. I could possibly use a little bit of white acrylic. Maybe. That will save me having to be careful of all these circles if I want them white. Trying to be a little bit quicker in, in the bigger areas because I don't want it to dry funner. I thought it was going to misbehave and start bleeding into that area but I think I've got away with it. Well I'm quite impressed with the amount that I managed to stay in the lines on this one, I'm not going to lie. I've watered that down a bit. Now while this is wet, come with that deeper red, just to add a little bit of variation to it. I don't want it to be just one block colour. Mushrooms are not like that. I might add a tiny bit of black as well to the mix. Yeah, that's perfect. while it's still wet with a clean brush so add your clean water and that will dry into a really cool effect right I have the gene where I don't know when to stop <laughs> So now is the time to stop because I'll, I'm messing with it too much. So I think with this one, even though they look like little bluebells, 
we'll go with that mustardy shade we'll try and mix one a little bit different maybe oh that's super pigmented wow so maybe just put this at the top and then try and pull the color down maybe Clean my brush off. Pre wet this and just see if it'll drag. Oh, there we go. I'm going to have to keep cleaning my brush off. Just like that. Maybe for the stalks on this one, yes, it's probably not called that. <laughs> oh, that was my shoulder. I'll do the same technique on this. Clean-ish water there, and then I'll start pulling it up and down, and just let it bleed. Well, I don't think that's too bad actually. And what's that took? About eight minutes, give or take. So now we've gone for them shades at the top. I think I'm going to try and do the olive green shades at the bottom. think so I'm not seeing this as olive green though I'm really not so I'm, and I'm not seeing that one so I'll, we'll do this one olive, olive green I think I want to do this red I'm not sure about this so I'll leave that one um, till last so let's try and make some of these god the, I forgot how pigmented these were actually having to just add water just so they're not they're not as thick I want to do the same thing with this. I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to be similar to that one, the first one that we did. I'm pointing and you can't see. We have a plane. Right, now while that's still wet, I'll add more colour. dries so quick on this paper that's one thing you do have to be a bit quick you know what I should have done use the Daniel Smith watercolor ground I wasn't even thinking uh, let's try this shade that's a really pretty shade super pigmented So you know what I'd say is if you was doing this and you're following along take your time a little bit more than I'm doing here just because I don't want this video to be too too long and you get bored I want to add some black some straight up black to this one and then blend it out brush off get my cloth hander that would help 
so you put in the clips there as well because I am adding a lot of water to the page now it will help to uh, make it dry a little bit flatter as well So I think I'll switch over to this one and I do want it a red colour but not the same red this is more of a pinky shade so I'll mix that with the red that I already had let's add a bit of water to that too pigmented it's very similar but there is to the naked eye I can see the difference it might not pick up on camera I'm going to do the stalks as well the same colour on this one as well. Don't forget this little guy down here. I think these sort of pages, when you don't know what to colour, are perfect because they're not going to take you too long. Or maybe you've been in a bit of a colouring slum and you want to get back into it. These are just perfect. I'm mixing a bit of the black and the brown in here. So I'll let, do, let this one really do its own thing. I'm not going to add loads of different colours and just see how it turns out and then we can add a little bit of pencil over the top I'm fully loading up the brush there and then just popping it down onto the paper and just letting it move wherever it wants to. Just like that. And I think I want to do maybe a mustard and a green. Maybe that will look nice. So we'll try that. Use the paints that I've already pre-mixed, not wasting what I'll do with this one is pop the colour all over and then add the green and let that move around and then I'll probably leave this for about half an hour I'm not going to use a heat gun, I'll just leave it, I'm going to go downstairs do something else and then come back, not mess with it and then add a little bit of pencil over the top, I think. And I might attempt to do a shadow. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how confident I am. If the mushrooms turn out really beautiful, I probably won't because I won't want to risk it. So I'll go in with the greens that I've already pre mixed. Just to use some of this paint up. Just a little bit of this darker one here. I told you I faffed too much. Oh, a little bit of black. A little bit of black. I can't help myself. I really can't help myself. I'm cleaning my brush off now. So we've got the little door and the little window to fill in. I think I'm just going to fill in the door and then I'll leave the window and do that in coloured pencil and maybe some metallic gel pen or something. 
So I'll just do a very basic flat colour I think here and just be careful because the page is wet. We'll do the door frame as well. Even though I might end up going over it. So this is where we're up to so far and I think that looks quite neat actually. And I think I want to use either my light fast or my prisma colour or polychromos. So I will make my mind up and then I will come back once it's completely dry. So I've decided to pull out my light fast pencils. I just wanted to show you my cute stickers. I've got a million and one of these. I got them from AliExpress and they were really cheap, like one pound fifty and I've stuck them to everything that I could, apart from the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm using my light fast pencils. I do keep a um, what's it called? Uh, Karen Dash uh, blender. I prefer this over the full blender. I do really like this one. Um, so I might use this. I might not because of the the base of watercolour. It has give a nice texture to the paper. So we'll start off. We'll go with the way that we did it. I think my mind's just ticking over because I'm just thinking now it looks better without a background. Let's get the pencil work done and let's see how far I can get. I do really want to not necessarily finish this in one video but I do do want to get the ball rolling to finish it off so it might be in two parts it depends how long it takes me. So I've got golden sun here and I will try my best not to sharpen it on camera because I am using a Helix crank sharpener and it's super duper loud. So actually I can take these clips off now. Now that it's dry, let me check for blade three. Nope, perfectly fine. Which is good, which is always good. I don't know how well this one is going to show up, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. I think I, did, I do need a bit of a darker shade. This mustard one might work well actually for this one. So I'm, I'm all fingers and thumbs. I really am. It's getting back into the swing of things. You'd think it had been months and months and months without me filming, but a month will, will do it apparently. <laughs> Dark honey, let's try this one. That's a bit better. Now I don't want to go over the top with the pencil work, that's not the point. The point is the watercolour because it was really quick, it was easy to do and I found it really, really relaxing to use watercolour in my colouring books. Paper depending, really be careful if you're using it on Amazon printed paper I probably wouldn't recommend that actually. I've never had a success with that, maybe you would, you would be able to maybe. So I'm going to use that same dark honey shade actually for this one, but let's switch over to autumn brown. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> Can you tell I'm over this uh, this time of the year? I've got a tree in the back garden though now that will have leaves everywhere. So that will be, I've got a big learning curve, a big learning curve in this house. I feel like a grown up. So I just want to deepen up some of these areas that I've already put these darker browns. I don't think I'm going to add a gel pen. I don't think I want to add acrylic either. I think I just want to leave it as, as simple and as, as easy as possible. And if you do try any of these I'd love you to tag me on Instagram. So I can have a little nausea. So dark honey for this middle mushroom. I'll go back up again. quite nice. 
these uh, pencils have slowly, slowly becoming one of my favourites and I know, I know they're so expensive and it's not like I'm doing artwork for people to hang up on the wall, although sometimes I do, <laughs> sometimes I do, just this particular ones that are in colouring boots, you know, but I can always flip back through the boots and I know what I've used, nine times out of ten I remember. a little bit of a darker shade I did like that autumn what was it autumn brown let's see just have a little the uh, noser natural brown chocolate that sounds good right now can't have chocolate so I'll use the chocolate pencil perfect These mushrooms, for some reason, remind me of Clara Markova books. Maybe I should do a colour along for Halloween time. Give me an incentive to colour in the, them books a little bit more. Same down here as well. And just to make it a little bit easier on myself, I'll use this same brown on the door. And then even Let's try a black. I've got black, I'll just Mars black. So I think I'll just use the black for this one. For deepen that up a little bit more. And while I've got this black out, let's add a little bit of shadow underneath here. a deep red so I'm, I'm keep sticking with the the color schemes like I said I just want to make this as easy and as simple as possible so we've got cherry red strawberry uh, let's have a look at chestnut that might be a little bit too dark that's, oh no we're all right See how it just deepens it up ever so slightly. There's a gap though that I've missed as well, so I can fill that in with the pencil. So I want to make it look like there's maybe some lights on. So I'll go in with the yellow to start, and it's just called yellow this one. And then with dark orange. And then to further deepen it, let's try. What should we go with? Uh, um, chestnut? I'm going to pop a little bit of this actually just as a layer and then blend this out. I did say I was going to use gel pen, but in, I think I want to keep this whole page matte. I don't want to add any glitter, any shine, nothing like that. I have got natural brown here as well. I 
I think I'm going to do a background, a little bit of a watercolour background, just a little bit of something and I'm going to use the Caran d'Ache blender just to go over that and get rid of the white of the paper and it, this blends it beautifully and so easy, so easy. Right, so we need to do this mustard one. So I think dark honey is called for again, starting off at the top, pulling the colour down. I've got the perfect pen. I bet you're not going to be able to find it. I'm going to have to come off camera and then find it, then come back. The is it Sakura glaze pen in black? I want to use that instead of white. I want to use black, so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, and with the natural brown again. And I'm going to keep all of this pencil because I want to use this with the next one, which was this middle one, I do believe. Now, we didn't add any brown watercolour with this one, so I don't know how well this will work, but I thought it might do. I thought it might do the trick. And some black, I think. Let's pop some black on now. Uh, where's the black? There it is. And I want to add the black pen that I'm talking about to this one. Possibly this one this one or this one this one maybe um, so I want a really nice dark green so I'll try forest and I've just tied all my watercolours up biggest tot this here as well, just a light layer. And then some down the stem. Somebody's going to correct me in the comments, they're probably not called stems. But hey ho. And then I want to go in with the black again. Should just keep this pencil out really, shouldn't I? But I like keeping organised, I like them in a certain position. I like them all in this position of a printed chart. And then I know where everything is. That's how my brain works. Although I do have one pencil set, the Prismacolor, that I don't follow that rule. Every other pencil set that I own, I do follow the rule of uh, the the way that they're colour charted. Right, so we've got this one little mushroom here. Ooh, ruby earth. Let's have a go with this one. I don't think that could have been any more perfect. I just caught it at the corner of my, ha my eye. I wasn't looking at the colour chart, I promise. I just noticed it. Uh, we'll go actually up with this side, just to make it a little bit different. There's another colour I like the look of. There's raisin. Raisin, I like that one. Maybe try a little bit of that as well. And of course, a bit of black. I 
I just think it's it's quite effective with not a lot of effort. I don't think I've even sharpened this one apart from just watching it, which I probably should do, but I don't want to make the noise. It can get very, very annoying. So this is just a deeper version of the previous colour. That was good eyeballing from me. Right, so the last colour will be black and then I will get that pen and set the watercolour back up and then do a, a something for the background. I'm not 100% sure what. We'll just wing it. Something really simple and really easy to follow. And easy and quick for me to do. <laughs> like I said, I'm getting back in the swing of things so please do bear with me. But I'm, I'll be like how this has turned out actually. I'm, I'm quite happy with this. So I'm going to bring you out now. Whoop. Zoom de zoom. I'm quite happy with them. So let's pop some sort of background. I'm going to have to do a really, really light background, I think, with maybe some pops of black, of course. So I've got everything ready. Now that I know I'm using watercolour again, I'm going to pin the page back down again. Now, when I just said I didn't want to put anything shiny on the page, um, first of all, I'm going to be using proper watercolour brushes with this one, not the aqua brushes, because I think they hold a little bit more water and it'll be easier to create the effect, the effect that I'm going for. But I think it'll just go perfectly. The Windsor and Newton Gold Ink, and it, they need, it needs a good mix. I need to use one of my older, cheaper watercolour brushes because. I don't trust this one with my really nice watercolour brushes so you do have to give it a really good shake and mix it up well so while that's doing its thing where did I put that pen? so it is the Sakura Jelly Roll Glaze in black and I love this pen it is superb superb now I've not used it in over a month so I'm just going to have to use my finger as a test. <laughs> if not, I'll have to get another one I can't use my finger as a test because it's not working. So, a scrap piece of paper. Yeah, that's coming out alright. <laughs> I did think it was then for a second. So, I want to do it on this little guy. So, we'll, we'll fill in all of these that maybe Hannah was thinking that I would colour white. Let's be different. Why not? Fill all these in. And they give like a really nice uh, shine effect. I, once it's all dried and all the page, I will lift it up and show you in different lights so you can see a little bit better. But it does give a nice shine to where you pop down the black. It's not matte at all. That's why I've probably gone through probably about five or six of these in about a year. <laughs> so I do use them out a lot. And they're nice for dotting effects as well. Which I shall do on this. No, I'm going to do it on this one. Fill the circles in that are already there. I'll just add some more dots. I keep forgetting to bring you down. I do apologise. So I'll fill in these ones. Actually, let's just go all out and just fill them all in there. Why not? A little bit difficult with this clip in the way, I'm not going to lie, but let's work with it. And just add some more dots as well where I see fit. We 
Oops, I went over the top with that one, didn't I? <laughs> right. Uh, some dots on this one. There's no dots here to follow, so I'll just add my own. And I think I'm not adding, not adding any more than that. Let's stop. Let's stop the... I'm a little bit nervous. I am going to have to bring you out for this because I want you to see the whole thing while I'm doing it. So let's get this all nice and mixed. So let's get to the corners. It will be fully loaded, but if I show the camera, it's really, really shiny, this stuff. I mean, you could use um, a metallic watercolour paint if you've got that. Don't you dare move. I thought it was going to flick back then. So I'll wet my brush. Let's go in with this olive colour, but I want it watered down. Just go for it. Just go for it. So I'll pop the colour down. What I want to do, I don't want to let this dry. Clean my brush off. Go around with clean water, let it bleed where it wants to go. Let's add a little bit more there. And I don't like that corner either. And while that is still wet, very quickly, Just a few here and there. And I'll see how that reacts. I'll see if I like it. If I don't, I can mix it and do whatever. Now I'm going to try. Whoops, it is. Oh, it just landed on there. Well, no, can't be out. I'm going to try and wet the paper first. And then add, add the colour straight on. See how that reacts. This is the crumbly one that I was talking about earlier on. So probably not the best colour for me to pick up. Let's add a little bit of the cream. Let's get this moving round as best as we can. You just don't want it to dry. Now, I'm not liking the effect. I didn't get the clock. I'm not liking the effect of just them dots. So I'm going to move them around a little bit. So now I know I don't like that effect. But it can be fixed. Let's put quite a lot on. And then I can move it around. Are you going to play ball? There we go. Dark brown. Quickly. Come on, activate. There we go. I want it to I don't want it to be one flat colour. I want the, the variation in there. Right, and then with this one, I want a bit of red. So I am going to be careful with this one. Let's wet the paper first again. And then with this quite deep red. I want to mix some black with this one. And I won't do gold on every single one because I don't think it'll go. And maybe just one more on this one. Yeah, let's uh, give that a go. On this side, maybe. A bit on here. I can't help myself, can I? I really can't. That 
actually I quite like the look of the you know the blocky lines there mmm oh go on I'll do this sad <laughs> do as I say and not as I do that's what uh, my motto for my channel should <laughs> be do as I say and not as I do I do really like the look of that actually. Let's plan this out a bit more. Right, the over the top jean is taking over here now so I need to be careful. I think that's enough. Maybe just a little bit there. Maybe some there. Alright, uh, I'm cleaning that brush off so I'm not allowed to use it again now. So I won't show you the final reveal until it's completely dry, but I'm quite happy with that. I'm quite a lot happy with that actually. I've pulled it off. Pulled it off quite nicely. So come back for the end result. So all done. Just had a, a nice angle to take a thumbnail. <laughs> I love it. I love how it turned out. And I'm so glad that I actually added the gold to the background. It's it's subtle, but I think it it goes beautifully. And I think that was such a simple page. I mean, I don't know how long that's took. Maybe an hour, maybe a little bit more than an hour because I've been filming. But hopefully you get some inspiration of this. I'm so ready for this time of the year. Why can't it just be? No, I'm over this weather. But anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed the video. Please think about subscribing if you're new, if you've just come across my channel. And please do give me a big thumbs up. Take care of yourself and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.